following broadcast is partially transcribed. The Life of Riley, formerly heard at this time, will be heard one hour from now over most of these NBC stations. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, proudly presents... Screen Directors Playhouse, star Cary Grant, production Mr. Lucky, director H.C. Potter. The Hollywood Screen Directors present a play on luck, the motion picture story Mr. Lucky, starring Cary Grant in his original role of Joe. the harbor of the city. Among the midnight mists at the end of a pier, a girl stands, looking out to the wartime sea. And at the other end of the pier... Sorry, bud, you can't hang around here. Oh, take it easy. I'm just waiting for a guy. Sorry, these docks are restricted. Well, what about that girl down there? She's got a pass. She's a somebody. Comes here every night. Yeah, I know her. Look, I got a pass, too. Oh, merchant marine, huh? Yeah, so is my friend. Sure, it's okay to wait for him. You say you know that girl? Yeah. And I know who she's waiting for. The guy? The sailor. He shipped to a dead heat with a torpedo. Oh. It's a long story. I got time. Well, ever hear of a fellow named Joe Adams? A gambler? Sure. Owned a gambling ship, Fortuna. Well, I worked for him. Joe and his partner, Zepp. They were big, real big, till the war cooled them off. Zepp, he was a two-bit grifter with a run of luck. Joe was the brains, a guy with a face full of dandy and a heart full of ice water. And he wasn't just another mug gambler. Somewhere he'd got himself an education, but he was tough. Well, the war had us on the ropes. The Fortuna was tied up here in the harbor, and Joe was broke. Snake eyes. Ah, boss, why do you keep playing with them dice? I don't want this old ship to forget what they sound like. Ah, oh, you'll get rolling again, Joe. Yeah, thanks, Crunky, but we can't back a game without a bankroll. You'll raise the wind, boss. I hope so, Crunky. I don't want the boys to think I'm letting them down. They'll wait. Yeah, all except Boscopolis. Yeah, the doc says Boscopolis won't last out the day. Lungs all gone. Too bad. He's a good guy. Hey, hey, Joe. Here comes your partner. Hello, Zap. What's the word? The mail's in. A card for Joe Boscopolis, a letter for me, and one for you, Joe Adams. What's wrong? Are we on somebody's sucker list? Yeah, yeah, Uncle Sam's. Greetings, Joe boy. We're drafted. Trapped? They can't do that to me. I'm a civilian. Let me see those letters. This isn't my war. I already won my war, crawling out of the gutter. Where do they get off pinning a number on me? And look at this. Boscopolis, 4F. Not lucky, <laughs> stiff. Some luck. He's dying. 4F. I'm getting an idea. Hmm? The government won't draft the 4F named Joe Boscopolis. Now, if we bury the 1A named Joe Adams... Now, wait a minute, Joe. It might work. Yeah, well, if it works for you, it can work for me. Boscopolis isn't twins. Well, I... I, I I'll trade you my half of the boat for his draft card. <laughs> what good is a boat in the army? Oh, Joe. Joe, boy, ain't we partners? You want to gamble, Zep? High card wins. The works. Uh, you... hand me the cards, Grunt. Joe, it's Goldie. What is it, Goldie? It's by Escopolis. He just died. Well, Zep, that makes it legal. Take your cut. Uh, for the draft card and the ship? Ah, 
<laughs> Queen of Spades. <laughs> you wouldn't crimp the deck on me, would you, partner? Huh? Well, well, I, I don't Save get you, those George. tricks for amateur night. Uh, My cut. King of Hearts. Uh, you always were too lucky. <laughs> Well, looks like the Army needs men like you, Zep. Now Joe Adams owns the ship, all of it. Not Joe Adams. Joe Bascopolis. We're going to bury Joe Adams, good and deep. Come on, Crunky, let's take a walk. And remember, from now on, my name is Bascopolis. Hey, Zep, don't keep the general waiting. All right, come on, come on, Doc. Take that thing off my arm. If I'm going in the Army, let's get it over with. You won't be going in the army. I would... What? Rejected. High blood pressure. I'm sorry. Hey. Hey, you know, Doc, it could be worse. Yeah, I could be a draft dodger. Then I'd really be in trouble. Hey, uh, Joe... Pascopolis. Hmm? What kind of a name is that? It's Greek. It's a Greek name. Oh, well, maybe now you ought to learn Greek. Now, look at this joint. Why? Well, the window says Greek Relief Foundation. I bet there's plenty of people in there talk Greek. <laughs> Forget it, Crock. I don't have to learn. Wait a minute. What's the matter? That sign. Greek War Relief Dance and Bazaar, Ritz Savoy Hotel. Yeah. Maybe we can help them, Crunky. They might go for a gambling layout. Not these society creeps. Everybody gambles if you make it easy enough, and I can make it very easy. Crunky, you go back to the ship. But, boss, maybe a shit is... I'm losing money on my blankets as it is. But, Mr. McDougal, six dollars a blanket is outrageous. Outrageous? You're perfectly right, Dorothy. You most certainly are right. Who are you? My name is Joe Vescopolis. I'd like to help if I can. Help us? Oh. Well, Mr. McDougal here is overcharging us for some blankets. Well, I'm Mrs. Stedman, and this is my assistant, Dorothy Bryant. We are quite, quite perturbed. Uh, you leave it to me. Mr. McDougal, you look like a sport. Six dollars a blanket. Uh, tell you what, I'll gamble with you. Du- double or nothing. If you win, I'll pay. Twelve dollars or nothing? Oh, please, no, you shouldn't. Anything for my favorite charity. You're on, Mr. McDougal. Now, let's play the old kids game, eh? You remember the old kids game? Don't you, Mr. McDougal? Yeah, what's that? Well, I take this half dollar. See this half dollar? Eh? I hold it behind my back. Now, you guess which hand it's in. Double or nothing? Right. Here we go. Now, guess. What? Well, no, uh... Mrs. Stepp, what? the coin hooks onto the back of his coat. Uh, it isn't in his hand at all. He's cheating for us. Isn't that divine? Go on, Mr. McDougal. Take your pick. Well, uh, I'll take uh, the right hand. Too bad. Right hand's empty. Oh. Better luck next time, Mr. McDougal. Oh, Mr. McDougal, what a lovely contribution. Just come along and we'll arrange the paper. Goodbye, Mr. McDougal. You've been a great sport. Uh, Mr. Bascopolis, we appreciate your assistance, but uh, are you sure it was quite legitimate? It was a gamble. But I really came here to make a donation. Well, that's very kind. But I'm afraid I'm going to be busy with Mrs. Stedman for a few minutes. Oh, that's all right. I don't mind waiting. I intend to devote a lot of time to this cause. Hiya, Goldie. What you doing back on the ship, Zep? Oh, the army gave me a few days. Say, uh, you knew Joe Bascopolis, the one that died? Yeah, sure I know him. You ever getting any jams? Oh, he served some time. Why? Oh, nothing. Just wondering, Goldie. Just wondering. <laughs> kept you waiting, Mr. Bascopoulos. You said something about a donation. Is it to be cash? About $100,000 cash. A hundred thousand... You must be crazy. Miss Bryant, your organization is running a bazaar. You want to make money. Well, let me have the betting concession. I'll make you a fortune in one night. You mean gambling? Oh, lady, the way I do it, it isn't gambling. I see. And what are you planning to get out of this? Miss Bryant... My name is Bascopolis. That's a fine old Greek name. And my poor family still lives in Greece. 
Well, that is what's left of them, and what's left of poor Greece. All I want is a chance to help, that's all. A chance to help. Oh, I am sorry. You see, my grandfather's all the family I have. And we're both so secure. Well, I'm afraid you just can't understand. Well, goodbye, Miss Bryant. Oh, please. Do you really think we could raise the money your way? Well, of course I think so. But I know you don't think so. You don't trust me. I know. I'm not the kind of man you go dancing with or invite to your home or kiss goodnight. Uh, Mr. Baskopoulos, I'll make you the same proposition that you made Mr. McDougal. I'll gamble with you. If I lose, we'll do business. Well, that's kind of silly, isn't it? Put the half dollar behind your back and let me guess. Right. Which hand? Neither. Uh, well, that's not fair. You have to guess. Neither. It's behind your back, hooked onto your coat. <laughs> Looks like you lose. Here's the half dollar. Why, it's... It's in your left hand. Well, do you think I'd cheat a person like you? A person who's doing the fine work you're doing? I'm sorry. I... I didn't know the rules. Uh, I guess we both made a mistake. Mr. Vescopolis, will you run the gambling concession at the bazaar? Uh-huh. You, uh, think you can trust me now? It's getting late. Oh, what's that got to do with... Uh... That's the kiss good night, Joe. I trust you. Oh, you don't know how happy you've just made me. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Joe. I thought there might be something here in the police records about Joe Baskopoulos. Well, this is his con. He's a three-time loser. One more offense and Joe Baskopoulos goes up for life. Three-time loser, huh? Once more and he gets the book. You know this guy? He in trouble again? Hmm? No, not now. But he will be. <laughs> Listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Mr. Lucky, starring Cary Grant and presented by RCA Victor. Once upon a time, people said, Open Sesame to enter the world of magic. Nowadays, they say, RCA Victor. That magic password has opened up one new world of pleasure after another for all of us in radio, in recorded music, in television. RCA Victor's latest television miracle is the 1950 16 inch table model, the T164 on sale everywhere at a cost of $299.95. It has all the incomparable features that make RCA Victor America's favorite television. Easy tuning, big, bright, clear, steady pictures, locked in tune with the station, and, of course, complete dependability. The cabinet is more beautiful than ever, and most beautiful of all is the price, far, far less than last year's 16-incher. Your RCA Victor dealer will be delighted to show you this 1950 wonder. And he'll tell you all about the RCA Victor factory service contract, too. It's one more reason why you should take your television magic the RCA Victor way. Now, back to the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Mr. Lucky, starring Cary Grant in his original role of Joe. Say, uh, maybe I ought to go look for my friend. He's late. He'll be along. Finish the story. Uh, what about the girl on the pier? Uh, she's the dame. She's Dorothy Bryan. Holy smoke. The gimmick was slick as a poker chip. She went for Joe, but heavy. Come the day of the charity bazaar, you could have shot dice with the light in her eyes. But, uh, what about this Zep? We didn't figure him. Both of us were too busy with the setup to worry about Zep. Okay, Crunky, go it straight. Sure, Joe. I go tell the boys to start moving the equipment into the hotel for the night. All right. If you want me, I'll be at the hotel here at the Greek Relief. 
Uh, boss, um, what's our cut going to be? The work's crunky. We take it all, every cent. <laughs> That's all I want to know. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, something up? So many orders are pouring in, we'll need more tickets. Oh, it's the gambling fever. People go a little dippy when it hits. <laughs> Joe, why did you ever become a gambler? A person like you. You could have been anything, done anything. Well, on my side of the tracks, we don't get any choice. You and your grandfather wouldn't understand. You've had a hard life, haven't you? I didn't know it showed. Oh, it doesn't. Not to everybody. But I know. Oh, well, look, we're busy. I'm going over to the hotel. Check the layout. You phone for some more tickets. All right, Joe. Whatever you say. Hello? Mr. Bryant? Yes. Who is this? Just a friend. I want to do you a favor. You got a granddaughter who's mixed up with a guy named Joe Bescopolis. Yes, in that gambling affair. I've told her I don't approve. Well, you won't approve of this either. Her boyfriend has a police record, a bad one. Good Lord. If she was my granddaughter, I'd do something about it. Yes. Yes, I'll call the police commissioner immediately. Sure, you do that. The name is Bascopolis. Joe Bascopolis. <laughs> Dorothy. The police, Joe. They're waiting for you in the office. Why? My grandfather sent them. He found out. Well, what did he find out? Oh, Joe, Joe, why did you take the chance? What chance? With your prison record, you... What prison record? Now, don't lie to me, Joe. Please, not now. Come on. Where are we going? My apartment. To telephone grandfather. Say, what is this? I still don't get it. You just sit there. Hello, Grandfather? Yes. It's Dorothy. Is that yes, he's right here. Now listen, you old tyrant. If you don't give me your word of honor to call off the police, I'm going to marry him. Huh? Shh. That's what I said, marry him. You, you I'm going to count three, Grandfather, so you better make up your mind. One, two... Th oh, you dream. You promise? Yes. All right, now just take a nice hot bath and forget the whole thing. Uh. See? Simple. Certainly. Why not? You had a swell club to hit him with, me. Joe. Marrying me is the worst thing you can think of, isn't it? I'm no criminal. The police have nothing on me. Joe, listen to me. All that matters to me is you, as you are now. Why? Because you're Joe. Because you're helping us to make the money to rescue a brave, tired people. Because... Because I love you. I'm sorry, Joe. I shouldn't have said that. No, you shouldn't. Well, let's go, Joe. Come here, you. I've done a lot of things in my time. Some of them wrong, maybe. But I promise you this. With you, it's going to be good and right and straight. You're going to get everything you want for those people. And I'm going to help you, just as I said. Because well, maybe I love you, too. Now, come on, with you at the gambling party. Come up black this time. Well, if it doesn't, we've lost five hundred dollars. Hiya, crunk. How's business? Terrific, boss. But we got company. Hello, Joe. Oh, well, well. I thought you were in the army, Zep. Oh, I've got a week yet. Now, what are you doing here? Oh, I thought I'd like to watch a big time man operate, Joe boy. Crunky, are we big time? Our take should be a hundred grand, boss. Our take is nothing. Uh, Joe, you said... That... I know what I said. I'm double-crossing myself, okay? Uh, well, maybe it's not okay with the boys, Joe. Zep, stay out of my hair. <laughs> the name got to you, huh, Joe boy? Now you cross the boys. This is my show, Zep. and you're out. Cronky, pass the word. No take. If you want me, I'll be in the ballroom with Miss Bryant. <laughs> been the most wonderful hour I've ever spent. Uh, the most profitable, anyway. 
The customers went for a bundle. How much did we make, Joe? Plenty. You get the girls together, darling. I'll check the money. We'll be waiting for you, Joe. All right, hold it, partner. Good old Zepp. All gunned up. Yeah, and it makes a loud noise, too. Where's Crunch? The boys took him back to the ship. They're unhappy, Joe boy. What's the play? The army didn't want me. I'm declaring myself back in the business. And we're not paying off to charity. Zap, you're not being smart. Well, there's nothing you can do about it. You're Joe Bescopolis. And Joe Bescopolis was a three-time loser. If the parole board finds out you're in this schemist, those one-way doors clang shut. I can prove I'm not Bescopolis. All right. So you're a draft dodger. You want it that way? <laughs> All right, Zep. I know when I'm licked. The money, Joe, in the black bag. You carry it. And remember the gun right here in my pocket. Darling, we're ready for the news. How much? Tell her, Joe boy. It's been a bad night, Dorothy. But you said we were winning, Joe. I made a mistake. Not you. You don't make mistakes. Well, a tough run of luck. And it ran right into that little black bag, didn't it, Joe? Shut her up, Joe boy. Joe, if you don't give me that Dorothy. money, I'll call the police. Dor it's not yours, Joe. <gasps> <laughs> a lovely punch, Joe boy. Now I recognize you. All right, let's shove off. Now, don't think, Joe boy. Just keep moving down the back way. Easy, easy. Cops. Maybe we should stash the bag. Don't be a sucker. Here's it. You carry it. Oh, you lousy rat. <laughs> Where's your gun now, Zep? No. No, Joe, don't. No! Sleep tight, Zep, boy. Dorothy, is there anything more in today's paper? No, Mrs. Stedman. They're finally through laughing at us. Oh. At me. Say, uh, are you, uh, Miss Bryant? Yes, I'm Dorothy Bryant. I got a present for you. Hmm? Here, this bag. Well, what is it? Go on. Open it. Money. What? Thousands and thousands. It's the same bag Joe was carrying. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. Where is he? Who? Oh. Joe Bascopolis. I ain't supposed to tell you about Bascopolis. Oh, please. But there's a guy who called himself Bascopolis. What? A guy named Joe Adams. He owns a gambling ship. Oh, where is he? Where is it? This morning it sailed for Greece with a load of food and medical supplies. Joe was on it. Oh, Joe. Joe. <laughs> So Joe ran out. He said she'd got some dirt on her dress. A little water to brush off. Did it? What do you think she's standing out there on the pier for? Mm. Uh, what about Joe? Uh, he was in love with her, too. The ship was torpedoed on the way home from Greece. Hello, Cranky. All set? Hi, uh, Joe. I've been waiting for you. Holy smoke, is this... How can you kill a guy like him? Go get us a cab, will you, Cranky? Uh, oh, boss, uh, look... Uh, uh, maybe you ought to just take a walk uh, on the pier, maybe. What's the matter with you? Get the cab. Okay, okay. But but you can't leave. Uh, not now. <laughs> Why not? First night of show. Well, you, uh, you... Oh, say, uh, your name Joe Adams? That's my name. Well, a, uh, uh, a package came for you. What kind of package? It's down at the end of the pier. Well, go and get it. Oh, I can't leave my post. You'll have to get it. Oh, for... All right. Better watch your step. Pretty foggy out there. I'm all right. Joe. Joe. Dorothy. Oh, darling. Darling, you came back. That double-crossing guard. I'll never let you get away again. Not ever. Package on the pier. Joe, I love you. I love you. Come here, you. Oh. You know, I'll never be able to gamble again. Why not, darling? Just now, this minute, I used up all the good luck in the world. <laughs> Just 
just heard the last act of Mr. Lucky. Our star, Cary Grant, and our guest screen director, Mr. H.C. Potter, will be with us in just a moment. Next Friday, another great star brings one of her most delightful performances to the screen director's playhouse for the first time on the air. Our story is It Had to Be You, and recreating her original role will be Ginger Rogers with screen directors Don Hartman and Rudolph Matte. Now, here again is tonight's star, Cary Grant. Harry, I understand that in real life you go in for music as wholeheartedly as Mr. Lucky went in for gambling. Is that right? Well, not to the extent that people say, Jimmy. For instance, there is no truth to the rumor that my bicycle bell has a special Cole Porter arrangement. (laughs) But you do have one of the largest record libraries in Hollywood, don't you? Probably. I've been collecting records since that little dog listening to his master's voice was just a pup. (laughs) Well, Carrie, what do you think of the latest member of the family? RCA Victor's new 45 RPM system. Definitely best of the breed, Jimmy. The music sounds alive, not recorded. In fact, I'd say when it comes to recorded music, life begins at 45. Nicely put, sir. Say, Carrie, what model 45 do you have? Oh, one of those little fellas you plug into a radio phonograph or television set. Cost me only $12.95. Yes, it's the lowest priced automatic record changer ever made. And the handiest, I'll warrant. I lug mine everywhere. Lugs easy, plugs easy. And those little seven-inch records certainly store easy. You know what, Carrie? RCA Victor is making over a million and a half of the 45 records and over 50,000 of the record changes a month. And that's still not enough. Isn't that astonishing for a brand new system less than a year old? Oh, nothing astonishing about it, Jimmy. Americans always know a good thing when they see it. Well, it's easy to see the 45. Just go to your RCA Victor dealers and ask for the finest fastest, handiest automatic record changer ever made. Yours for only $12.95. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lucky was one of those films created by a process known as potterization. Now, that's the thing that happens when a story, a cast and a screen director named Hank Potter are mixed in equal quantities. The result is Hank's unique brand of photographic magic. Tonight, he's in England. But with the help of a shortwave recording, I can still introduce you to the director of such excellent films as Shop Worn Angel and The Farmer's Daughter. My director, Hank Potter. Hello, everyone. Carrie, you may be Mr. Lucky, but me... Well, tonight I'm just one of Lady Luck's unfortunates. I tried to charm her into letting me be in Hollywood for the broadcast, but she just shook her head and said, no dice. So next time, Carrie, how about using a little influence? I'm sure your performance tonight won the heart of Lady Luck completely. Good night, Carrie. Good night, everyone. And good night to you, Carrie Grant and H.C. Potter. Remember next Friday, Ginger Rogers in It Had to Be You, brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Mr. Lucky was presented through the courtesy of RKO Pictures, distributors of Howard Hughes' sensational production, The Outlaw, starring Jane Russell. Cary Grant can currently be seen starring in the 20th Century Fox production, I Was a Male War Bride. H.C. Potter is currently directing the Metro Golden Mayor's The Miniver Story, starring Greer Garson and Walter Pidgeon. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley with dramatic direction by Bill Carn. Portions of this broadcast were transcribed. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen again next Friday when RCA Victor presents... Screen Director's Playhouse, star Ginger Rogers, production It Had to Be You, directors Rudolph Maté, Don Hartman. Next, it's Jimmy Durante with Don Amici on NBC. NBC.